anyway. You see, we are outside. We are the we, um, we are enjoying ourselves. We went out as a family, as a congregation, all praises to the Most High. So we are out here, you understand? So we're going to have class, okay? So the name of the class is called Focus, Commitment, and Faith. That is today's class. Focus, Commitment, and Faith. Okay, let's open up with Wisdom of Solomon 1. Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 1. Let's read that. Wisdom of Solomon 1, verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verses 1. Come on. Love righteousness. Love what? Love righteousness. Love righteousness. Read. Ye that be judges of the earth. Ye that be judges of the earth. The judges of the earth is the 12 tribes of Israel. Get that in 1 Corinthians 6 and 1. Love righteousness. Ye that be judges of the earth. The judges of the earth is the 12 tribes of Israel. That's why we have the book of judges in the Bible. Okay? The book of judges. Read that. First book of Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 1. Come on. Dare any of you having a matter against another. Dare any of you have a ma having a matter against another. Come on. Go to the law before the unjust. Read. And not before the saints. And not before the what? And not before the saints. Go ahead. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? You see that? He says, do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? Because the judges of the earth, the judges of the world is the saints. Get that in Psalms 148 verse 14. Let's see who is the saints according to the Bible. The saints of the Most High. Psalms 148 verse 14. The book of Psalms chapter 148 verse 14. Come on. He also exalted the horn of his people. The Lord. The Lord is the one that did that. Read. The praise of all his saints. The praise of all his saints. Come on. Even of the children of Israel. Even indeed of the children of Israel. Go ahead. A people near unto him. Because the children of Israel, we are a people near unto the Lord. Read. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We must praise the Lord for that thing. Go back now. First Corinthians 6. Verse 2 again. First book of Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2. Read. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? Do you not know that the Israelites shall judge the world? Come on. And if the world be judged by you. And if the world be judged by you. Read. Are ye unworthy to judge the smallest of matters? We are worthy to judge the smallest matters because we are the judges of the earth, the Lord is saying. So he says, the small matters that we have amongst ourselves, we can judge those matters. That's why we have councils after councils after councils and more councils. Okay? So go back. Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 1. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 1. Come on. Love righteousness. Love righteousness. Righteousness is the keeping of God's laws. That's what righteousness is, right? Ye that be judges of the earth. Ye that be judges of the earth. Meaning, love righteousness, you children of Israel. The children of Israel, we are commanded to love righteousness. What is righteousness? Get that in Luke 1. Luke chapter 1 verse 6. We are commanded to love righteousness. That's what the Lord is saying. Okay? Love righteousness, the Lord is commanding us. Read that. The book of Luke chapter 1 verse 6. Come on. And they were both righteous before God. They were both righteous before God. Read. Walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. That's what it means to be righteous. When the Lord is commanding us to love righteousness, he says love his commandments. Love his laws, statutes, and the commandments. Go back. Wisdom of Solomon 1, verse 1 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1, verse 1. Watch this. Read. Love righteousness. Love righteousness, meaning love the law. Love his commandments. Read. Ye that be judges of the earth. Ye that be judges of the earth. You Israelites, because unto us, give me that in Romans 3. The reason why he's commanding us is he's commanding the saints, the children of Israel. He says, love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. This is the reason why he's commanding Israel to do this. Okay? Read that. Romans chapter 3 and 1. The book of Romans chapter 3 verse 1. Come on. What advantage then had the Jews? What advantage then had the Jews? He says, what advantage do the 12 tribes of Israel have over any other nation? Come on. Oh, what profit is there of circumcision? What profit is there of circumcision? The circumcision that we read about in Genesis, the 17th chapter. The covenant that the Lord made with our forefather Abraham. Come on. Much every way. Much every way. Read. Chiefly. Chiefly meaning mainly. Read. Because that unto them. Because unto us, the Jews. Read. Were committed the oracles of God. Were committed the oracles of God. That's why he's commanding us to love 
righteousness. Because unto us was committed the oracles of God. We were given the laws, the statutes, and the commandments to be the judges of the earth. It doesn't look like that right now, but we're coming up. Okay, come on. For what if some did not believe? Because some of our people don't believe that. They don't believe that unto us was committed the oracles of God. Right? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Is because they, Just because they don't believe. Is it going to change anything what is written in the book? It's not going to change nothing. The Bible says what it says. It's not going to change it, whether you believe it or not. Go ahead. Is that it on that? No, sir. Right? God forbid. Meaning, no. It's not going to change what the Bible is saying. Come on. Yay. Yay. Meaning, yes. Let God be true. Let the Bible be true. But every man a liar. But every man a liar who don't believe. Read. As it is written. As it is what? As it is written. As it is written. Come on. That thou mightest be justified in thy sayings. That we may be justified in when we, when we teach, we are going to be justified. Because we are reading it out of the Bible as it is written. Come on. And mightest overcome. When thou art judged. Because when the, when the people judge as they speak evil, they will not have any leg to stand on because why? We're teaching as it is written. Okay? Now go back now. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon 1 verse 1. One more again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 1. Read. Love righteousness. Love righteousness. Come on. Ye that be judges of the earth. Ye that be judges of the earth. We are the judges of the earth. Okay? The Lord is grooming us to get to that level. As a nation. Come on. Think of the Lord. Think of the Lord with a good heart. The Lord is called. You see, we must think of the Lord with a good heart. Because just having a good heart, it doesn't mean anything if you can explain it, what that means. Okay? Romans 7. Actually, give me Luke 8. Luke 8 verse 15. Luke chapter 8 and verse 15. Let's read that. The book of Luke chapter 8. Verses 15. Read. But that on the good ground are they. Read. But that on the good ground are but they. But that, but that on the good ground are they. Come on. But that on the good ground are they. Read. Which in an honest and good heart. Which in an honest and good heart. An honest and good heart. Read. Having heard the word. Having heard the word of God. Having heard the commandments of the Lord taught to them. Read. Keep it. They keep it. Go ahead. And bring forth fruit. With patience. You see what it means to have a good heart. When he says, think of the Lord. Think of the Lord. He says what? Think of the Lord with a good heart. To think of the Lord with a good heart, it means to keep his commandments. You think upon his laws, the statutes, and the commandments, and how to get your mind right. That's what it means to think of the Lord with a good heart. Go back now. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1. Ray. Love righteousness. Mm. Ye that be judges of the world. Of the earth. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 1. Love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. Think of the Lord with a good heart. Read. And in simplicity of heart, seek him. He says, in simplicity of heart, seek him. Because in our simplicity, we don't seek the Lord. What makes us simple is us not keeping the laws of the Most High God. What gives us wisdom is when we obey and apply it. That's what gives us wisdom and what? We are no longer going to be simple as hell. Because the law says we're simple without his commandments. That's what he's saying. Now read verse 5. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 5. Read. For the Holy Spirit of discipline. For the what now? For the Holy Spirit of discipline. For the Holy Spirit of discipline. Read. Will flee deceit. So whenever there's deceit, the Holy Spirit will depart. That's what the Lord is saying. The Holy Spirit is the laws of God. The Holy Spirit is the what? Is the Holy Ghost. What is the Holy Ghost? Let's get that. X7. Let's see what the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit of the Most High God. There's another one in Isaiah 63. But read that. Yes, sir. X7 verse 51. Come on. The book of Acts chapter 7 verse 51. Read. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart, in heart and ears. Read. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. He says, we always resist. We do always resist. Meaning, we do always. We do always. Do what now? You do always resist the Holy Ghost. We do always resist the Holy Ghost. You see what he's saying? Meaning, by actions. That's why he says, we do always resist the Holy Ghost. Come on. As your fathers did. 
as our forefathers did in the days of old. Read. So do we. He says, so do we. Go ahead. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? Read. And they have, and they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one. The just one is talking about Christ, the Messiah, the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Read. Of whom ye have been now betrayers and murderers. You see that? He says, of whom we have now become betrayers and murderers. Read on. Who have received the law. Who have received the what? Who have received the law. Because that's what we read in verse 51. The law. That's what we, res we resisted in verse 51. Come on. By the dispositions of angels. By the disposition of angels. Come on. Meaning and the leaders, the teachers. Read. And have not kept it. And have not kept it. That's what the Holy Ghost is. The laws of God. The Holy Ghost is God's commandments. Okay, give me Isaiah 63 verse 10. Isaiah 63 and verse 10. Let's read that. The book of Isaiah chapter 63 verses 10. Read. Actually, start of verse 8. The book of Isaiah chapter 63 verse 8. Read. For he said, surely they are my people. They are my people. The they is in verse 7. Read verse 7. The book of Isaiah chapter 63 verse 7. Come on. I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord. The loving kindness of the Lord is his commandments. Read. And the praises of the Lord. Mm -hmm. According to all that the Lord hath bestowed on us. Read. And the great goodness toward the house of Israel. You see that? And the great goodness towards the house of Israel. Read on. Which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies. Read. And according to the multitude of his loving kindness. The commandments he gave unto us. The oracles that he committed unto us. Read. For he said, mm -hmm. surely they are my people. The house of Israel in verse 7. Come on. Children that will not lie. You see that? Come on. So he was their savior. So he was our savior. That's the Messiah. Go ahead. In all their affliction. When we were scattered all over the world through slavery, colonization, and forced migration, apartheid, and all that. Go ahead. He was afflicted. He was afflicted. Come on. When we were in affliction, the Lord was afflicted. So we don't think when the nations oppress us, the most High God don't see that, and the Lord does not get afflicted when we get oppressed. He does get afflicted because we're serving a just God. Read. In all the affliction, he was afflicted. He was afflicted. Read on. And the angel of his presence saved him. Read. In his love and in his pity, Read. he redeemed them. He redeemed us from the hand of Pharaoh. Not only that, but he redeemed us when he died. Go ahead on the cross. Come on. And he bared them. And he bare us. Read. And carried them all the days of old. Read. But they rebelled. But they did what? But they rebelled. That's Israel. The Lord says, but they rebelled. But we're not going to rebel forever. That's why we're coming into truth now. That's why we're waking up. You understand? The most High God is softening our spirits and our hearts that we get our minds right. We're not going to rebel forever against God's commandments. Read the book of Isaiah chapter 63 verse 10. Because that's what they use. They say, but Israel is always rebelling against the laws of God. They did it back then. They are doing it today. Meaning what? Now the Lord is dealing with everybody. He's not dealing with everybody. He's dealing with the house of Israel and that's it. Read. The book of Isaiah chapter 63 verse 10. Read. But they rebelled mm -hmm. and vexed his Holy Spirit. You see that? And vexed his Holy Spirit. He's going to tell you what that is. Come on. Therefore, he was turned to be the enemy. You see that? The Lord became our, we became the Lord's enemy when we vexed his Holy Spirit. When we rejected his commandments. Come on. And he fought against them. The Lord fought against us by using the nations to oppress us. Read. Then he remembered the days of old. Stop right there. He did what? Then he remembered the days of old. Then the Lord remembered the days of old. Come on. And his people saying. No, no, no. Read that again. Verse 11. The book of Isaiah chapter 63 verse 11. Mm -hmm. Then he remembered the days of old. He remembered the days of old. Moses. What, who? Moses. You see that? The days of old. He remembered Moses. Because what did Moses teach us? The law. Which is what we're supposed to observe this day. The laws of God that Moses taught us in the wilderness when we came out of Egypt as slaves. Read. Then he remembered the days of old. Moses and his people saying, mm. Where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? With the what? With the shepherd of his flock. Because that was the angel that was with us. You understand? With the shepherd of his flock. Come on. Where is he 
that put his Holy Spirit within him. You see that? Where is he who that put his Holy Spirit within him? Because the Lord gave us his Holy Spirit at the hand of Moses when we came out of Egypt. So Moses gave us the Holy Spirit, which is the commandments. Okay, come on. That led them by the right hand of Moses. You see that? That led them by the right hand of our forefather Moses. Ray. With his glorious arm. With his what now? With his glorious arm. With his glorious arm. Read on. Dividing the water before them. You see when he parted the Red Sea. Read. To make himself an everlasting name. The Lord made himself an everlasting name when he used Moses to part the Red Sea. That we may cross over. You understand? The same thing that the Lord did for us back then, he will surely do it again in these last days. He will surely deliver us according to the covenant that he made with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You understand? That's why we're here, to learn, to get our minds right. Okay? Go back. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1. Read verse 5 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 5. Come on. For the Holy Spirit of discipline. You see that? The Holy Spirit is the laws of God. It gives us discipline. Disciplined people, they are focused people. People that are disciplined is people that are focused. You understand? And what gives you focus? The laws of God. Read again verse 5. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 5. Go ahead. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. You see that? The Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. Because when you have discipline, there will not be deceit. And when deceit comes, you'll see it from afar. You understand? The Lord will be merciful unto you for you to see it. You understand? When there's deceit, when there's evil, the Lord will help you. You understand? Like now, the Lord helped us. You understand? We were hoping with a little help. Okay? Mm. Verse 5 again, man. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 5. Read. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. Will flee deceit. So when you have discipline, you have focus. Discipline gives you focus. What gives you discipline? The laws of God. You understand? Give me that in Sirach 18 verse 14. Ecclesiasticus chapter 18 verse 14. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 18 verses 14. Read. He hath mercy on them that receive discipline. You see that? The Lord has mercy upon us when we receive his discipline. His discipline is his laws. The laws of God gives us discipline, which gives you focus. When you're, when you're not focused, it means you have no discipline. We have no discipline, it means the laws of God you have none. Okay? That means you're not keeping the laws of God. Read again verse 14. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 18, verse 14. Read. He hath disciplined. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 18, verse 14. Come on. He hath mercy on them that receive discipline. Read. And that diligently seek after his judgments. And dil that diligently seek after his judgments, so we can make the right judgments according to the law. Give me that in Sirach 32. Sirach chapter 32. Okay. Read verse 14. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32, verse 14. Read. Whoso feareth the Lord, if you fear the Lord, will receive his discipline. You see that? When you fear God, you will receive his discipline. What is his discipline? His laws. Because when you receive the discipline, you become a disciple. In what? In the law. What makes you a disciple is the laws of God. God's laws make you a disciple. When you're a disciple, you have focus. Okay? Go ahead. And they that seek him early shall find favor. And they that seek him early shall find favor. Understand that, man. The most, listen, when we seek the Lord early, the Lord will show us favor. Understand that thing. We just experienced this thing not so long ago. So all praises to the most high God for that thing, man. Read it again. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 32, verse 14. Go ahead. Whoso feareth the Lord will receive his discipline. Go ahead. And they that seek him early shall find favor. They that seek him early shall find favor. Okay? Now, again, disciplined people, they are focused people. Focused people, they know how to prioritize things. When you focused, you know how to prioritize. You understand? Give me that in uh, Matthew 23, 23. Because Christ taught us that thing. But he taught us how to focus. He taught us how to prioritize the important things from the less important ones. 
Okay, Matthew 23, 23. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verses 23. Read. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Read. Hypocrites. Come on. For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, mm. and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. You see that? And have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Read. Judgment. Judgment. That's a, that's a weightier matter of the law. Come on. Mercy. Mercy. That's a weightier matter of the law. You see that? Mercy is a weightier matter of the law. Read. And faith. And faith. Faith is a weightier matter of the law. Go ahead. Judgment, mercy, and faith. Read. These ought ye to have done. And these ought ye to have done. Come on. And not to leave the other undone. And not to leave the other undone. He's not saying don't focus on the less important things. But he's saying prioritize. Prioritize on the weightier matters of the law. We must focus on what? Judgment. Because we use the laws of God to make proper judgments. So that's the weightier matter of the law. The laws of God will teach us how to distinguish from right from wrong. You understand? How to tell your left hand from your right. The, most, uh, the laws of God will do that thing. Okay? Mercy. Mercy is a weightier matter of the law. You understand? We just exercise that in Israel. You understand that? The Lord will be merciful unto, he says, if he will be merciful to the merciful ones. You see that? We exercise mercy and the Lord shows that mercy also. Read again, man. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verses 23. Go ahead. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Read. Hypocrites. Hypocrites, come on. For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin. And have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Read. Judgment, mercy, and faith. You see that? So Christ is giving you the important things that you must focus on. Judgment, mercy, and faith. And faith is part of the tonight, today's topic. Okay? Faith is what of is. So guess what? This class focuses on of the one of the weightier matters of the law. Mercy, judgment, and faith. Faith is a weightier matter. It's part of the class. It's part of the topic. Because it is a weightier matter. That's why we're bringing it up. All praises to the most high for that thing. So people that have discipline is people that are focused. People that are focused is people that know how to prioritize things. They know how to prioritize the weightier matters of the law. You understand? You will start with those and you deal with the least. Christ is not saying don't deal with the least. Still deal with the least. You understand? But focus, prioritize your issues. That's what the Lord is saying. You understand? So that's heavy stuff right there. It's very important because a lot of the times, the reason why you find yourself, you are all over the place, you are musing upon many things, is because you are focused on the least way matters of the law. Not that you must leave those undone, but the Lord is saying you are focusing on the least instead of what? The weightier matters of the law. They're important, the other ones, but he says, prioritize them. Okay? Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 9. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9. Read verse 14. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 14. Come on. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. You see that? Because when we always in our thoughts, we're going to be miserable. That's why you see you find yourself depressed. You always find yourself, uh, you're, you find yourself falling into that black hole of depression. The black hole of feeling sorry for yourself. The black hole of wanting to be worshipped. The black hole. That's the black hole you find yourself in there. Why? Because it says what? Your thoughts are not the thoughts of the Lord. You see that? Give me that in Isaiah 55. The reason why you find yourself, your thoughts are misery, is because your thoughts are not of the Lord. You're not in the spirit of the Lord. That's why your thoughts are miserable. Okay? Miserable people are not focused people. Miserable people, they are not focused people. They are all over the place. Okay? Give me Isaiah 55. Read verse 8. You know what? Start of verse 7. Start of verse 6. Mm. Start of verse 6, man. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 6. Come on. Ye seek. No, no. Seek ye the Lord. The book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 6. Read. 
Seek ye the Lord in the Bible, in the scriptures, in the law. Come on. While he may be found. While he may be found. Go ahead. Call, call ye upon him while he is near. Meaning cry unto him, pray unto the Lord while he is still near unto you. Go ahead. Let the wicked forsake his way. Let the wicked forsake his way. That's repentance. Let the wicked forsake his wicked ways. Read. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. You see that? And the unrighteous man, his what? And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. You see that? Because that's why it says, for the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Because the thoughts of mortal men, guess what? They, those thoughts are against the Lord. That's why he's saying, let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man, his thoughts. Because the, unright the thoughts of an unrighteous man is what? Sin. Read. And let him return unto the Lord. That's how you, this is repentance. The Isaiah is teaching us repentance here. And let him return unto the Lord. Go ahead. And he will have mercy upon him. And the Lord will have mercy upon you. When you for, forget your unrighteous thoughts, your wicked ways, and return unto the Lord, he says, the Lord says, I will have mercy upon you. Come on. And to our God, for he will abandon, for he will abundantly pardon. He will pardon you abundantly. He will pardon you of your sins. So there's no sin that you cannot repent from, except blasphemy the Holy Ghost. But guess what? There's no sin though that big that the Bible cannot solve. There's no problem that big that the Bible does not have a solution for. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8. Verse 9. The book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 9. Yeah, yeah, verse 8, verse 8. The book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8. Read. For my, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. You see that? Because he says, because my thoughts are not your thoughts. Why? Because what is our thoughts? They are miserable. Our thoughts is miserable. That's why it says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Come on. Neither are your ways my ways. You see that? Neither is our ways the ways of the Lord. Come on. Say it the Lord. Say it the Lord. You see that? So because why? We mortal and we sinful, we don't want to forsake our wicked ways. So that's why the Lord says, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Because our thoughts are supposed to be what? Rooted in the laws of God. That's why our thoughts are supposed to come from. The things we say must be what's written in the book. It takes practice to do that. It's not something that is going to happen overnight. You must rehearse it over and over until it sinks in the spirit. And it's not going to sink easily like that because for all our lives we've been taught garbage. Now we have to get rid of that garbage and it's going to take a lot of pain. We must go through the pain of change. And many of us, we don't want to go through that. We don't want to go through the pain of change. You want change, but you don't want pain that goes along with it. You understand? So, and for, for that to take place, you have to have the spirit of discipline. You have to have the spirit of focus. You have to have the spirit of the, the other stuff that I want to go into. Okay, go back. Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 14 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Ray. And our devices are but uncertain. And our plans are but uncertain. You understand? There's a scripture that says there's many devices in a man's heart. That, what is that? It's in Proverbs, right? Find that for me. There's many devices in a man's mind. I think it's in Proverbs. Yes, sir. 1921. Is it 24? 1921, sir. 1921? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's it, right? The whole praises. Watch this, man. Start of his 20. Yes, sir. The book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verses 20. Read. Hear counsel. That's the key. Hear counsel. Come on. Receive instruction. Because that's the stipulation, by the way. That's the condition. To get rid of those many devices in your head, you must apply verse 20. Read verse 20 again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 20. Read. Hear counsel. Hear counsel. And receive instruction. And receive instruction. Come on. That thou mayest be wise in thy letter end. You see that? That you may be wise in your letter end. Because when you come in, you're not going to be wise. When you come in, you don't have wisdom yet. But the wisdom will come in your letter end. You understand? Go ahead. The book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verses 21. Uh -huh. There are many devices in a man's heart. You see that? 
The reason why he says you must seek counsel, seek instruction, is because there are many devices in a man's heart. Go ahead. Nevertheless, nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. You see that the counsel of the Lord will stand. So he's saying, get let go of the mortal thoughts. Let go from the mortal thoughts, man. That's what he said right there. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Because those mortal thoughts, they'll give you many devices in your head. Meaning what? You've got many thoughts. You're musing upon many things. You think in that one minute, you, you're over there, what, next second, your mind is racing all over. Because what? There is no focus. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Okay? Now go back. Wisdom of Solomon 9. Verse 14. One more again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 14. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Right. And our devices are but uncertain. And our devices are but uncertain. Because those devices is not one device. It's many. It's many devices. Find me that in Nasirak when he says, um, for the deceitful man has many trains. Read that. Find that scripture for me. Sir. What verse is that? Sirach 11.29, sir. Sirach 11.29. All praises. You're cooking with gas. Read that. Sirach 11 verse 29. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 11, verses 29. Read. Bring not every man into thine house. He says, don't bring every man into your house. Read. For the deceitful man. Because, because the deceitful man hath many trains. Has many trains. Many devices. That's what the Lord is saying. For the deceit, because the deceitful man has many traits, has many devices. You understand? So to get rid of all these many devices, the Lord is saying we must what? We must stay focused. We must have the spirit of focus. We must seek counsel, okay? And receive the instruction. That's what he's saying. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 15 now. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verses 15. Come on. For the corruptible body presses down the soul. You see that the corruptible body is our mortal body. He says it presses down the soul. You know what that means? Your mind, your, the spirit is willing, but the mind is weak. But the flesh is weak. That's what he's saying. Your mind wants to do this, but the flesh is holding you back. Okay? That's why we, we're doing our best to exercise so we have strong bodies so that why? Our bodies may follow the mind of the Lord. The spirit is willing. But the flesh is weak. So what we must we do? Sarah 30 verse 15 real quick. Let's get there. How do we strengthen our flesh, man? The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30, verse 15. Verses 15. Because a lot of the times you may think, or that's how we must, we must, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, and you think we must leave it there. No. The Most High is saying, strengthen that weak flesh. That's why he says, we're going to read it now in next, in Hebrews 12 and 12. Now read that for me. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30, verse 15. Read. Health and good estate of body. Health and good estate of body. Are above all gold. They are above all gold. Read the verse above it, man. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30, verse 14. Read. Better is the poor. Better is the poor. The poor is us, the 12 tribes of Israel. Come on. Being sound and strong of constitution. When he says being sound and strong of constitution, he's talking about your body. Being sound and strong of constitution. I get a constitution is a body. Yeah, a constitution is a body. So he says being strong, being sound and strong of body. Come on. Being sound and strong of, of constitution. Of constitution. Which is body. Come on. Than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. You see that? So when a rich man is afflicted in his body, they are always getting sick, having multiple surgeries and all that. That is a miserable life. Okay? It's not good to live like that. Go ahead. Health and good estate of body are above all gold. You see that? Your health is above all gold. All the gold you can collect, and you know what's really heavy about that? You can't eat that. You, you can collect the gold and the diamond, you're not going to share. You can't even drink it. It will sit there. You understand? Read. And, and a, a what? 
health and good state of body are above all gold, and a strong body above infinite wealth. You see that? As your stro a strong body is above infinite wealth. So, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The Lord has a solution for it. We're reading it right here. You understand? We're reading the solution right there. Okay. So go back. Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 15 now. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 15. Come on. For the corruptible body presses down the soul. The corruptible body will press down your soul. Come on. And the earthy tabernacle. The earthy tabernacle is our corruptible bodies. Read. Weigh down the mind. Is going to destroy the mind. Go ahead. That museth upon many things. You see that? If your mind is musing upon many things, guess what? You're not going to be able to achieve the things that you have set out to do. Because disciplined people are focused people. Focused people, they have a priority. They know how to prioritize things. And then pri people that know how to prioritize things, they start, when they start something, they finish it. When they start something, they see to the finish. But if you don't have all those characteristics, you're going to start, you're not going to be done. You're going to get stuck in meat somewhere. You understand? And when you fail to achieve that goal, everybody's the devil. You hate it, it's everybody's fault now. You understand? Why? Because you don't want to go through the pain of finishing whatever it is that you started because it's going to be painful. That's the key. That's why it's not everybody that does it. That's why everybody's not rich. Why? Because you have to go through the pain of getting to that. That's why everybody does not have a chiseled physique. Because you have to go through the pain of chiseling. You, you see what I'm saying? That's why not every sister going to get married. I'm just, it's the truth. You know why? Because not every sister is doing what this Bible says. Not every sister going to be submissive. So they're going to miss the married train. They will not be at Marriedville. They will be at Singleville and be a single ten. You see that? That's what's going to happen to them. So that's the point. Because why? Not everybody's willing to go through the pain of change. And not every brother will get married. You know why? Because not every brother is willing to man up. If you're not willing to man up, you're not going to get married, at least not in Israel. In the world, you'll marry a Jezebel because you you'll be on simp mode. You'll get married and you, the both of you are made for each other. But in Israel, both ends must be ready for marriage. The marriage will never end. But I'm not going over that today. Okay, now. Let's go back. Wisdom of Solomon, eh? chapter 1. Yes, sir. Verse 5 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. Read. For the Holy Spirit of discipline. Actually, I said give me Hebrews 12 and 12. Yes. Okay. Hebrews 12 and 12. Because the thing is, the reason why we went over, it says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, is because that's why the Lord said what, he, what we're about to read. Right here. We read, we read the solution in Zerach 30, but let's read another one. Hebrews 12 and 12. Read that for me. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 12. Okay. Read properly now. Come on. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 12. Read. Wherefore? Lift up the hands which hang down. You see that? Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down. Because that means they are weak. So what must you do to strengthen them? You lift them up. That's why brothers be doing jumping jacks and sisters too. <laughs> they lift them up. Jumping jacks. You see that? Next, next part. What does it say? Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down. Read. And the feeble knees. You see that thing? The feeble knees from those squats. You understand? Lift them up. Lift up that leg. You understand? High knees. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> Lift up the hands which hang down and your feeble knees. Go ahead. And make straight paths for your feet. You see that? And make straight paths for your feet. So imagine a brother or sister, their hands are hanging and their knees are feeble. How are they going to walk? Monkey mouth. You understand? They're not going to walk straight, Muslim. 
They're going to be on gorilla mode because you see the way it works. Like, but that's how the Lord made it. So when are you going to be walking with a crooked back? That's, how the Lord, that, that's not how the Lord made you. You understand that? So yes, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But the Lord didn't say, leave the flesh right there. No, he says, exercise it. That's how you make the flesh to be strong. Okay? That's how you do it. You understand? So now, let's move on to the next one. Okay? Now, um, we're going to move to commitment. Today's class is focus, commitment, and faith. Let's deal with commitment, man. Commitment. Commitment is very important because the Lord committed the oracles, his oracles unto us. So we also have a commitment to him. You understand? Romans 3 and 1. Read again. We read it earlier on, but let's read it again. Romans 3 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Romans chapter 3 verse 1. Read. What advantage then had the two? Mm -hmm. Or what profit is there of circumcision? What profit is there of circumcision? Read. Much every way. Much every way. Come on. Chiefly. Because that unto them. Because that unto the Jews in verse 1. What happened? Were committed the oracles of God. You see that? Mm -hmm. Unto us was committed the oracles of God. So the most that God committed his, his laws, his statutes, his wisdom unto us. You understand? Baruch 3.36. He committed his laws, his statutes unto us. Okay? So we now we have a commitment unto him. Understand that, man. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verses 36. Read. He hath found out all the way of knowledge. The Lord, the most high God, hath found out all the way of knowledge. Read. And hath given it unto Jacob. And hath given and committed it unto Jacob. You see that? Yeah. And hath committed it unto Jacob. Read. His servant. His servant, come on. And to Israel, his beloved. You see that? Is this Baruch is saying the same thing that we just read in Romans. Okay, Second Ezra 1. Second Ezra chapter 1. Second Ezra chapter 1. Um, read verse 5. You know what? Start of verse 10. You know, start of verse 9. Yes, sir. Yeah, Second. read verse 9. Come on. Second book of Esther chapter 1 verses 9. Watch this. How long shall I forbear them? How long shall I forbear them? That them is Israel. Okay, come on. And to whom I have done so much good. You see that? The Lord says, I'm not going to leave you alone. Because I've done so much good unto you. you see, the Lord wants a return on investment. Mm. You know, he not play, by the way. He wants it back. So he committed unto us the laws, his commandments. Guess what? He wants a return on investment. Read again verse 9. <laughs> Second book of Ezra, chapter 1, verse 9. Read. How long shall I forbear them? How long shall I forbear them? He's speaking to Ezra now. Read. And to whom I have done so much good. Because the Lord has done so much good unto us. Read. Come on. Many kings have I destroyed for their sakes. You is listing those things now. Because when you do that, they're like, ha, but what is the what is the word? Um Wambari <laughs> yeah. Because you listing the things that you have done. No, it's in the Bible. The Mosai says, How long shall I forbear them unto whom I have done so much good? Many kings have I destroyed for their sakes. He's listing now. I've destroyed many kings for your sake. Read. Pharaoh. With his servants mm -hmm. and all his power have I smitten down. You see, for us, for our sakes. Read. All the nations have I destroyed before thee. Before meaning we saw it when the Lord did it. Read. Like the Assyrians. You know, 185,000 were put to death in one night by the angel. Mm -hmm. When they woke up, everybody be dead. Read. And in the east, I have scattered the people of two provinces. Mm -hmm. Even of Tyrus and Z Zidon. Tyre and Zidon. Come on, these are the Canaanites. Come on. And have slain all the enemies. The Lord, is, he says, I killed all your enemies for you. Go ahead. Speak thou therefore unto them, mm. saying, Watch Thus this. saith the Lord. Thus says said, now because of all this, talk to them, teach them. Read. I led you through the sea. He is listing it again. <laughs> you see, the most high is be listing things. I've done this, 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 this. So, in the world now, it's like, no, no, no. Don't be saying that. 
No, 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 don't be saying that. Especially the sisters, they love saying that. Mm. Yeah, but mm. that's why many of them, they'll be leaving their husbands because of that. You hear many men, they say, you know, I, I did this for the sister, I did that for the sister, and after that she just leaves. Mm. You know why she's leaving? She doesn't want to bring a return on investment. Mm. Yes, because it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a coward move. It's an easy scapegoat. Mm. No, you know, I agree my husband. You know what she's saying? She's saying, I don't know how I'm going to repay after what he has done. Hmm. No, it's true. Hmm. Go ahead. Second book of feathers now. Let me slow down. Come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 1, verse 12. Read. Speak thou therefore unto them, hmm. saying, Thus saith the Lord. Read. I led you through the sea. Go ahead. And in the beginning gave you a large and safe passage. You see that in the beginning gave you large and safe passage. Isn't that what we just read earlier on? You understand? When is there easy parted the sea? We read it earlier on, right? Mm. I hope you're paying attention, man. Read. I gave you Moses for a leader. He says, I gave you Moses for a leader. Guess what? That's the good that the Lord has done for us. Mm. He raised up a leader to guide. Read. And Aaron for a priest. And Aaron for a priest. For a prophet. Come on. I gave you light in a pillar of fire. You see, in the chariot. He says, I was there with you. Read. And great wonders have I done among you. And great wonders have I done among you. Read. Yet have ye forgotten me, saith the Lord. You see that? He says, but yet you have forgotten me, saith the Lord. He says, you forgot about me now. Jeshurun works fact and kicked. You see what Jeshurun, the upright one, mm -hmm. this is what he did. Read. Thus saith the Almighty Lord, the quails were as a token for you. He's the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Read. I gave you tents for, for your safeguard. Uh-huh. You see that thing right there? So when we're going over this, mm. <laughs> we're going to touch on this again. Mm. Is I gave you tents for your what now? I gave you tents for your safeguard. I gave you booze for your safeguard. Go ahead. Nevertheless, you murmured there. Again. Just be complaining, man. Read. And triumph not in my name for the destruction of your enemies. Meaning we didn't glorify, we didn't praise the Lord when he destroyed our enemies for us. Read. But ever to this day do ye yet murmur. You see, he says, unto this day, 2023, he says, the Jews are still murmuring. Go ahead. Where are the benefits that I have done for you? You see that thing? <laughs> what, the, because unto us was committed the oracles of God. He says, I've committed the, the, the greatest wisdom I gave to you. Where's the return of my, my investment? Mm. Hmm? When am I going to reap the fruits? Because we are the fruits. Mm. So he's the husband man with the fruits. He's waiting for the fruits. <laughs> That's the return on investment. Read. Second book of Ezra chapter 1 verse 17. Read. Where are the benefits that I have done for you? Mm. When ye were hungry and thirsty in the wilderness, <coughs> did ye not cry unto me, Ray. saying, mm. Why hast thou brought us into this wilderness to kill us? These are the taskmasters now. You <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. It had been better for us to have served the Egyptians. You see that thing that he, now, that we just explained with the woman. He says, it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians. Now I'd rather go back. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave my husband instead. Instead of dealing with the benefits, I agree you receive benefits. Now you must return on investment. The Lord is saying, no, 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 no. I want the return on investment. Instead, the, 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 the woman is like, nah, I'm going back. Because she's running away from this. Israel is not keeping the commandments. They are running away from this. Yeah, our people not wanting to keep the laws of God. In their spirit, they know how much the Lord has done for us. Because when they are in trouble, they remember him. That day they know how to pray. They know where the Bible is sitting. Mm -hmm. Under the bed somewhere gathering dust. You understand? Or he holding the, 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 you know, the balance of the TV. <laughs> you understand? The, the, the TV stands is missing a foot. Ubele baby anymore. Or no, it's perfect. Yeah. You see that like this. You, you see what I'm saying? But on that day, he remembers. Or no, no, no. It's, it's the fourth foot on the table. You understand? The, 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 the carnal table is sitting on the spiritual one. Mm. Read again. 
second book of Ezra chapter 1 verse 18 saying why hast thou brought us into unto this into this wilderness to kill us wait it had been better for us to have served the Egyptians than to die in this wilderness you see Israel being ungrateful again but the Lord is bringing us back that's the point the Lord is bringing us back into glory into honor okay now give me first Peter 2 21 Yeah, the sisters, they need to start taking pictures, eh? Yes, because the sun is, is going down. Okay, you can, still, you can do it, sisters. You can do it now. Come on, read that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. First Peter 2. First Peter 2, 21. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verses 21. Read. Right. For even ye unto were ye called. Watch this. Because Christ also suffered for us. Christ did what? Because Christ also suffered for us. Because Christ also, he suffered for us when he died for the 12 tribes of Israel. Read. Leaving us an example. He left us an example. That he should follow his steps. Watch this. Who did no sin. That's, that's, that's the example he left behind. Read. Neither was guile found in his mouth. Neither was bitterness found in his mouth. Go ahead. Who? When he was reviled, mm -hmm. reviled not again. Go ahead. He was not revengeful. Read. When he suffered. Like that. I said something there. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. First, first book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 23. Read. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. Go ahead. When he suffered, he threatened not. Read. But committed but himself. Did what? Committed himself. But he did what? Committed himself. But he committed himself. Come on. To him. That judgeth righteously. You see that? So, the same way the Lord committed his oracles unto us, we have a committed commitment unto him. And the example, the perfect example is the example of our Lord and Savior. He says, but he did what now? But did what? But committed what? But committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. You see that thing? He committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Meaning, when he returns, he's going to bring that fire. You understand? But he committed himself to that thing. So Christ was, Christ had the spirit of commitment. Our, our Lord and Savior was focused. He had discipline. And that's the example we ought to follow. You understand? Give me that in Psalms 31. Psalms 31 verse 5. Let's read that. Psalm 31, verse 5. Start of verse 1. We're going to jump. The book of Psalms, chapter 31, verses 1. Read. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. You see that? In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Come on. Let me never be ashamed. Uh -huh. Deliver me in thy righteousness. You see what he's saying? Deliver me in thy righteousness, O Lord. Come on. Bow down thine ear to me. Read. Deliver me speedily. See, this is the type of prayers we must pray to the Lord, man. Read again. The book of Psalms, chapter 31, verses 2. Read. Bow down thine ear to me. He says, bow down thine ear to me. Meaning, Heavenly Father, hear my prayers, he's saying. What? Deliver me speedily. Deliver me speedily because we are in captivity. We are asking the Lord to make the time short and deliver us speedily. Read. Be thou my strong rock. Uh -huh. For an house of defense to save you. You see that? For an house of defense to save us. The house of defense is the what? Jerusalem. The holy city. That's the house of defense. You understand? Read. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Mm. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. You see that thing right there? Because this is King David, by the way. King David was a mighty prophet. This is what he asked the Lord. It amazes me. When brothers come up in here and they, they get put out for the evil they do so they can get their mind right, humble themselves. That's another thing. Some brothers, they have no humility. They don't want to humble themselves to what this Bible is saying. They can do it on their own because what? They are too clever for this book. But King David, Acts 2.29, but King David, a mighty prophet, this is what he's saying, man. And we're not anywhere on the level of our forefather King David. But listen to what he was saying. So what's wrong with the Negro? Now read that. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 29. Watch this. 
men and brethren. Men and brethren. Let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David. Mm. Our forefather David, King David. Come on. That he is both dead and buried. Uh. And his sepulchre. And his what? And his sepulchre. And his sepulchre, come on. Is with us unto this day. Read. Therefore, uh. being a prophet. Being a what? Being a prophet. You see, King David was a prophet, man. He was a mighty prophet. Read. And knowing that God has sown with an oath to him. You see that God has sown with an oath, an oath to him. Read. That of the fruit of his loins. That the fruit of his loins, his sperm, his seed. Read. According to the flesh. According to sexual intercourse. He would raise up Christ. He will raise up Christ. To sit on his throne. To sit on his throne. You see that thing? So, King David, a mighty prophet. But listen to what he's saying. But if I'm a Negro, he's like, no. Me, I don't need you niggas. I got this. King, a mighty prophet, listen to what he's saying. Go back to Psalms 31. Read verse 3 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 31, verse 3. Read. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Read. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. He says, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. When he says, for thy name's sake, he's talking about his laws, his statutes, and commandments. You can read about that in Revelation 19, verse 18. Is it? Go ahead. Pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me. You see that? It says, pull me out of the net that they've laid privily for me. What is the net? Sin. The simplest way to explain it is sin. Pull me out of the sin that they've set up privily or secretly for me to fall in. Read. For thou art my strength. For thou art my strength. Now, but the Negro said, no, I got this. The Negro by himself said, I got this or sitting on a dairy couch. He be saying that. Go ahead, watch this. Into thy hand. Into thy what? Into thine hand. Into thine hand. I commit my spirit. There it is. Mm. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Read. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Read. Thou hast redeemed me, uh -huh. O Lord God of truth. You see that thing? So King David is like, I'm going to commit my spirit, O Lord, unto thee. So, you see that commitment is necessary in this truth, man. You have to be committed. Give me Psalms 37. Psalms 37, verse 5. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 37. You know what? Start at verse 3. The book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 3. Watch this. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the what? Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Not in your heart. Not in yourself. Not in your feelings or your thoughts. Read. Trust in the Lord and do good. And keep the commandments. That's what it means to do good. Read. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. You see that? The land is the land of Jerusalem. The kingdom of heaven on earth when the Lord returns and deliver us from captivity. Read. Delight thyself also in the Lord. You see that thing? You must, we must delight in the Lord. Because the problem is as a nation, we don't delight in the Lord. We delight in our phones. We delight in our cars. We delight in our jobs. We delight in our money. We delight in ourselves. We don't delight in the Lord, man. He's saying. You understand that? So we must delight in the Lord. That was, give me that in Psalms 149. Because the Lord had to bring this up because we were not doing it. Even unto this day as a nation, we're not doing this thing. Okay, read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 149, verse 1. Uh -huh. Praise ye the Lord. Read. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Come on. And his praise in the congregation of saints. The congregation of saints is the congregation of the 12 tribes of Israel. Read. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. That's it right there. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Read. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. You see that? Because today, our, as a people, our people are not joyful in their king. They are joyful in Caesar Borges. They are joyful in who? They are joyful in Julius Malem. They are joyful in, um, you know, what, what, what's his name? Mashatil. Paul Mashatil. They delight in Paul Mashatil. They delight in Cyril Ramaphosa, Tumamina. They delight in him. No, 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 no. We want to send the angel to the Lord. We don't want Ramaphosa to be doing that. We want Raphael to do the bidding. 
We don't want to be touring anybody outside of the angels, man. You understand? Go back. The book of Psalms, chapter 37, verses 4. Read. Delight thyself also in the Lord. We must delight ourselves also in the Lord. Come on. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. You see that? The Lord will de de give you the desires of your heart. The desires of your heart, man, is Proverbs 7, verse 2. Let's read it. You know what? Yeah. Read it. Proverbs 7. The book of Proverbs chapter 7 verses 2. Watch this. Keep my commandments and live. Keep my commandments and live. Come on. And my law as the apple of thine eye. That's the desire. The laws of God, that's what you must delight in. That's what you must desire. You understand? You must desire the laws of God. When you keep the laws of God, you get the kingdom. So that's, what, that's where our desire is, must be. All our desires must not be in the work of our head, in the work of our craft. You understand that? Yes, sir. Zerak 38. Read it. Zerak 38, the last verse. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 38, verses 34. Read. But they will maintain the state of the world. You see that? But they will maintain the state of the world. Come on. And all their desire. And all their desire. Is in the work of their craft. The Lord says we must not desire. Our desire must not be in the work of our craft. The work of our craft is the work of our hands, which is witchcraft. And I'm going to prove that. Give me that in Deuteronomy. Yep. I know I, I said this yesterday, but let me prove it. Deuteronomy 31. Deuteronomy 31, 27. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verses 27. Watch this. For I know thy rebellion. He says, because I know your rebellion. Talk about Israel. Read. And thy stiff neck. Mm -hmm. Behold, while I, am, while I am yet alive with you this day, ye have been rebellious against the Lord. He says, while I'm still alive, Moses is saying, he says, we've been rebellious against the Lord. Read. And how much more after my death? Look, look, mm. The level of rebellion after his death, look where we are. <laughs> this is the level of rebellion. We are in captivity. We are in South Africa, the bottom of all nations, suffering hard bondage. Why? Because after Moses prophesied about that thing, you understand? Read. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes mm. and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears Read. and call heaven and earth to record against them. That's some heavy stuff right there, man. Read on. For I know that after my death, he, he, oh, he says what now? For I know. For I know. I know. How does he know? Hmm. He knows. Hmm. When you read Second Genesis 14, I'm not going to go there now. Go ahead. For I know that after my death, but after my death, ye will utterly corrupt yourselves. You see, <laughs> he says you are going to utterly corrupt yourself. Look at us, man. Look at us as an, have we not utterly corrupted ourselves? Hmm. <laughs> we have utterly corrupted ourselves, man, as a people. You understand that? Utterly. Just go to the guys and look at the Negro. You understand? Look at our sisters. Utterly corrupted ourselves, man. Read. And evil will befall you. In the latter days. In the last days will be in great evil. Watch this. Meaning slavery, colonization, forced migration. Okay. Be on slave ships. Chains on our necks. Go ahead. Because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord. We will do evil in the sight of the Lord. To provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. You see that? Through the work of your craft. Hmm. All their desire is in the work of their craft. Hmm. Yeah. Hey. Moses talked about it this thing. Moses prophesied about this thing. And guess what? Where are we at now? Are we in our kingdom? Are we in our holy city, Jerusalem? Is the nation bowing down unto us? No, that's not happening, man. We are, the we are beggars right now. We beg him for everything. We beggars. Okay? And guess what? What we're doing right now is to end the begging. The begging must stop. Psalms 37. Go back there. Psalms 37. Read verse 4 again. The book of Psalms, 
Chapter 37, verses 4. Read. Delight thyself also in the Lord. Read. And he shall give thee, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. The desires of our hearts is to rule the nations on earth and to live forever and get the kingdom. That's the desire. If you're, that's not your desire. Mm. I don't know what to say to you, man. Go ahead. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. You see that thing? Commit your ways unto the Lord, he's saying. That is the commandment. We must commit our ways unto God. Read. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him. Read. And he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring it. The it is the desires of your heart in verse 4. That's the it. He will bring it to pass. What is that? What is the it? The kingdom. He will bring the kingdom to pass, man. And guess what? How, when we commit ourselves to God, we must pray for that to happen. Give me Matthew 6 and 9 now. We must pray for the it to come. Now we're going to read about that prayer. We're going to read the prayer now. We're going to read the prayer for it to come. The kingdom. Matthew 6, verse 9. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 9. Watch this. After this manner, therefore, pray uh -huh. ye. You see that? After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Go ahead. Our Father, mm -hmm. which art in heaven. Uh, you see, he's telling you where our Father is. In heaven. <laughs> in the heavens, man. Read. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name, meaning holy be thy name. Go ahead. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. That's the it. That's the it, right? This is what must be the desire of your heart. The kingdom to come. Because when we pray for the kingdom to come, the, the Lord's kingdom will not be ruling side by side with the current kingdom that's ruling right now. Babylon the Great. It's not going to happen. That means for the Lord's kingdom to reign, the current kingdom must be brought to naught. With what? With fire and brimstone. Okay. Read. Give us this day our daily bread. Right now we receive in the daily bread. Read. And forgive us our debts. Uh -huh. Meaning our sins. Come on. As we forgive our debtors. Read. And lead us not into temptation. You see, that's a heavy prayer, man. Lead us not into temptation. What is the Lord telling you? We are going to be tempted. You understand that? We are going to be tempted. That the Lord is telling you right there. If you, if you are saying, when are you special? Mm. Okay. Mm. Go ahead. And lead us not into temptation. Read. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. Because who's going to be in the evil? Us. Because we will be in the evil. Who led us in the evil? We did. By the work of our hands. In Deuteronomy 31. Read. And lead us not into temptation, uh, but deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For what now? For thine is the kingdom. Because the kingdom is the Lord's. Read. And the power. And the what now? And the power. The power to rule all nations on earth. That's the power he's talking about, man. Read. And the glory. And the, the kingdom. The glory of the kingdom. Read. Forever. Amen. All praises to the most high. That's the it. Give me Proverbs 16. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 3. Watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 16 verses 3. Watch this. Commit thy works unto the Lord. You see that? The son is coming back and doing, saying the same thing. Hmm. King David said it. His son is coming back and saying it. Do what now? Commit thy works unto the Lord. Read. And thy thoughts shall be established. Your what now? And thy thoughts shall be established. So if you don't want your you if you don't want to muse upon many things, commit your work yourself unto the Lord. When you don't commit yourself unto the Lord, your thoughts will not be established. Your thoughts will not be established, man. Because for your thoughts to be established means you are stable. Meaning your spirit is not broken. You have a sound mind. That's why it says your thoughts will be established. You will have a sound mind. Mm. Heavy stuff. Watch this. Because right now, here's, here's the thing. Give me that in Matthew. No, no, Isaiah 24 verse 19. I'm going to show you something here with this. You know what? Give me Genesis 2 verse 7. 
the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. The dust of the ground is the, is the earth. Read. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Uh -huh. And man became a living soul. So Adam was made from the soil, from the earth. Genesis 3. Read verse 20. Read verse 19. Watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 19. Come on. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Watch this. Till thou return unto the ground. Till thou return unto from the dust. Till thou return to the dust of the ground from whence thou was taken. Read. For out of it was thou taken. You see, for out of dust was thou taken. For dust thou art. There part right there. For dust thou art. For dust thou art. For dust thou art. Read. And unto dust thou shalt return. Now give me Isaiah 24. Verse 19 now. The book of Isaiah chapter 24 verses 19. Because if you don't keep God's commandments, here's what's going to happen to you, the earth. Watch this. The earth is utterly broken down. That's exactly what happened to the 12 tribes of Israel. We have been broken down now. Spiritually and physically. Read. The earth is utterly broken down. Uh -huh. The earth is clean dissolved. Destroyed. Read. The earth is moved exceedingly. You see, the earth is moved exceedingly. What happened to Israel? We've been moved exceedingly, spiritually and physically, and where we've been. 70 AD on down. Go ahead. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. Isn't that what the black man is doing now? Yeah. Reeling to and fro like a drunkard? Spiritually and mentally and physically, that's what the Lord is saying. Go ahead. And shall be removed like a cottage. You, that's what happened to us, man. We was removed like a cottage. Go ahead. And the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, mm. and it shall fail. They shall fall, and it shall fall. They shall fall by the edge of the sword. Read. And it shall fall and not rise again. But we're rising again now. We're rising again now. The Lord is raising us up in the third day. You see that? That's what the Lord is doing. He's raising us up in the third day. Man. So we must commit ourselves unto the Lord. So guess what? We must be men of focus. We must be men of discipline. Not only that, we must be men of what? Commitment. We must commit ourselves unto the Lord. We must endure. Because commitment requires endurance. 2 Timothy 2, verse 3. 2 Timothy 2, verse 3. Watch this. You know what's that, verse 1? Yes, sir. Watch this. 2 Book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 1. Read. Thou, therefore, mm -hmm. my son, be strong in the grace of that is in Christ Jesus. You see what grace is giving you? Grace gives you strength because grace teaches you to deny ungodliness. When you deny ungodliness, you become strong in the Lord. Read. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. You see that the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Go ahead. The same commit thou to faithful men. The same do what now? The same commit Thou to faithful men. He says the same things that you received, commit them to faithful men. That means for you to commit them to faithful men, that means you committed. You have to be committed for you to commit the same things that was committed unto you to faithful men. That means those men must have faith. You see that? Because it says you have faith, so you must commit them to faithful men because they have faith. Their faith will, will what? Will push them to do the same to, for others. Read. The same commit thou to faithful men. Read. Who shall be able to teach others also. There it is. They will be able to teach others also. Okay, come on. Thou therefore mm -hmm. endure hardness. You do what now? Endure hardness. Commitment requires endurance, man. Commitment requires endurance. Read. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He's letting you know it's going to be hard. That's the point. It's going to be hard. This journey is not easy. It's not for the weak. You understand? It's not for the doubtful. It's for those that have committed their works unto the Lord and they made a decision or I'm moving forward. 
Read the mission is a go. Go ahead. Second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verses 4. Watch this. No man that warreth. Because, he, listen, you, for you to be at war, you must have commitment, man. You must enjoy the pain of war. You go to war, you have victories, sometimes you take losses. Because it's a war, it's a battle. You understand? It's not a video game where you can just restart the game. Go ahead. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Read. That he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. All praises. You see that? That he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Because, brothers, the Lord is the one that chose each and every one of you to be soldiers up in here. So, guess what? Your job is to please the Lord. But if you come up in here and you say, my job is to please the Lord, but you don't like correction, what the hell are you doing here? Because the Negro, yeah, I know the Negro. The Negro say, but I'm here to please the Lord. Okay, but your high-ranking officer is commanding you to do such and such because you've been corrected. So, but, so, but me, I'm here to please the Lord. So, which means you don't see the Lord in your brother then. Okay, that's fine. Hate, 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 hate. Okay, now, let's deal with the next one. The next one is faith. We must have faith, brothers. You're not going to be able to do this work without faith. That's what we read. The Apostle Paul said the same thing. Read that again, Second Timothy, chapter 2. Read verse 2. Second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 2. Read. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, uh -huh. the same commit thou to faithful men. You see that? He says, the same commit thou to faithful men. Because remember, faith is a weightier matter of the law. We just read it. Faith is a weightier matter of the law. So guess what? You must have faith in this truth. You understand? Now watch this. Give me the book of Hebrews 11. Let's go to the hall of faith. Man. Hebrews 11 and 1. Watch this. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 1. Come on. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It says faith is the substance of things hoped for. Come on. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Uh -huh. The evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen yet. Because there's things that we are going to see. We're going to see the Lord. Say, How you know the Lord going to return? I have faith that he will because I'm reading his word. Because we, have, we haven't seen the Lord yet. We're going to see him, but guess what? The time is not yet. Okay, go ahead. For by it, for by it, the it is the faith in verse 1, come on. The elders obtained a good report. You see that thing? Because we're able to read about that, man. Read. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. Watch this. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. You see, because it says through faith we understand. How do we understand? How do we get the understanding? We keep the commandments of the Most High. That's how we get the understanding that the worlds were framed by the word of God. That's how we know. Go ahead. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen why not made of things which do appear? Because we didn't see the Lord do this, man. Technically. <laughs> we didn't see the Lord do this. But the point is, we didn't see the Lord do this. But we believe he did it. Because we can, the evidence is what we see. The evidence is the transatlantic slave trade. The evidence is what? The evidence is the sub-Saharan slave trade. The evidence is the Silk Road slave trade. The evidence is what? Colonization. Forced migration. You understand? Apartheid. All of these oppressive systems, that's the evidence. We can prove everything we're saying in the Holy Bible. Go ahead. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 4. Now watch this. Because faith is an action. Let's prove that. Hold that. Give me the book of James. Give me James 2. James chapter 2, verse 17. The book. Faith is an action word. Read what you got. The book of James chapter 2 verse 17. Read. Even so faith uh -huh. 
if it hath not works. You see that? Because what is the words we read in Hebrews 11? Is the things, the world that we see that the Lord has made. The people in it, these are the works of the Lord. Read. Even so, faith, if it, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. You see that? Because faith has to have works. That's what the Lord is saying. Read. Yea, a man say. A man may say. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, uh -huh. and I have works. He says, a man will say, thou hast faith, but I have works. Watch this. Show me thy faith without thy works. He says, show me your faith without your works. How can you do it? You cannot do it. You cannot show your faith without your works. Because your works prove your faith. Read. And I will show thee my faith by my works. You see that? Because faith is an action word. Because you might say, oh, how do we know? How do you know? How are we going to know the hundred and, which one are the 144? How do I know? Is there, how do you know that you are part of the 144? Your works. Your works. Their works will prove that they are part of the 144. Because they'll do the work because they are proving their faith by their works. They believe. Their belief is not in just words. Mm -mm. It's by works. Your belief is by your works. We, be, we hear what you're saying. Show us. It's called show and tell. Not tell and show. <laughs> show and tell. You understand? Go back. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 4. Because the Lord is showing us all the works he did. Now he's telling us about it. Okay. Hebrews 11. What verse you at? Verses 4, sir. Read. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 4. Now, we're going we gonna to show our forefather here. He's going to show us his faith by his works. Watch this. By faith, uh -huh. Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. You see that? Because of faith. Our forefather Abel proved his faith by his works. He brought a righteous sacrifice. Read. Which the book of, the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Come on. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4. Read. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Read. By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. You see that? There, he says he obtained witness that he was righteous. Go ahead. God testifying of his gifts. And by it, he being dead yet speaketh. That's the key right there. Because, because of his faith, he proved his faith by his works. What was the works he did? A righteous sacrifice than his brother. That's what our forefather Abel did. You understand? Get that in uh, Matthew 27. Is it 27 or 24? Let me see. Yeah, 23. Matthew 23. Um, read verse, verse 35. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verses 35. Read. That upon you, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. He says, upon you, who's the you? This generation. May come upon, he says what? May come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. Come on. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel. That part right there. You see that? From the blood of righteous Abel. So our forefather Abel was righteous. He kept the commandments. That's how he proved his faith. By his application of God's laws. Read. Come on. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verses 35. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. From the blood of righteous Abel. Unto the blood of Zacharias son of Barachias. Whom he slew between the temple and the altar. You see that? So our forefather Abel is mentioned again here. By Christ the Messiah. Because Abel, our forefather, had great faith. And his faith, he proved it by his works when he brought a righteous sacrifice than Cain. 
So guess what? Today, how do we prove our faith? Give me that in Sirach 35 and 1. We prove our faith this way, this day. Just like our forefather Abel did it by bringing a righteous sacrifice, by bringing an animal instead of cucumbers and lettuce and, and, and mint. You see? He focused on, hold on a second, man. That's some heavy stuff, man. Let's, let's get into it. Come on, man. Give me Matthew 23, 23. <laughs> oh, that's some heavy stuff. Woo! That's some heavy stuff right there, man. Matthew 23, 23. Watch this. Man. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 23. Watch this. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Read. Hypocrites. Come on. For ye pay tithe of mint. You pay tithe of mint. And, and, and anise. And anise. And cumin. And cumin. And have omitted the weightier matters of the law. That's what Cain did. Cain omitted the weightier matters of the law. That's what he did. Go ahead. Judgment, judgment, mercy, mercy, and faith. And what? And faith. Because you see, Cain didn't have faith. Cain had no faith. That's why he focused on the least matters of the law. Go ahead. And faith. These, these ye to ought ye to have done. These ought ye to have done uh -huh. and not to leave the other undone. You see that? So, because, listen, he brought fruits and veggies. Was the fruits and veggies unclean? No. But they were not the right, they, they were not the right sacrifice. They were not unlawful. But they were not the right sacrifice. That's the point. Because he focused on the least matters of the law rather than the weightier matters of the law. So he had no faith. That was his problem. We read right there. You understand? What place is the most high for that? Man? Okay. Where were we going? Uh, what verse? Zerak 35, sir. Oh, Zerak 35, yes. Zerak 35 and 1. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 35, verses 1. Read. He that keepeth the law uh -huh. bringeth offerings enough. That's it right there. Because he that keep What law did our forefather Abel keep? The fifth commandment. He observed the fifth commandment. He obeyed. He honors his father. He honored a, our forefather Adam and our foremother Eve. That's why he brought a what? A offering that was enough for the for the Lord to approve of it. Read. He that taketh heed to the commandment. Because our forefather Abel, he took heed to the commandments. Read. Offereth a peace offering. You see that? He offered a peace offering. Because he took heed to that commandment. He said, listen, when you do something wrong, this is how you atone for your sin. Bring an animal because it must be a blood sacrifice. Cain didn't go that route. No, Cain said, no, no, I'm going to bring fruits and veggies because but these are, these are lawful. No, but it's not what the Lord wanted. So he didn't honor his father and his mother. He didn't. You understand? He didn't do it. Go ahead. He that requireth a good turn. He, he that requited a good turn. He that requited a good turn offereth fine flour. Uh -huh. And he that giveth alms sacrificeth praise. You see that? So guess what? This is this is the mindset of Cain was verse 4. Read verse 4. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 35, verse 4. Watch this. Thou shalt not appear empty before the Lord. Yeah, now he said, you know, it's better than nothing. He said, that was his mindset. He's better than nothing. The Lord said, no, I don't want that. He was mad because he was like, but this is, this, this, this is also food, Muslim. The Lord said, no, I don't want that. I want an animal. I want blood. A vegetable don't have blood. Because vegans will be saying, but you know, the juice is the, no, no, no. <laughs> Neither is beetroot. You understand? Don't use that. Okay. <laughs> Don't be using that. Go back to Hebrews, man. Hebrews 11 again. We're almost done. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11. Um, read verse 7. No, actually, verse 6. You know what? Verse 5, man. Yes, sir. Mm. Heavy stuff. The book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. Watch this. By faith. By what? By faith. By faith. Come on. Enoch was translated. He was what now? Enoch was translated. Read. That he should not see death. Now that's some heavy stuff, man. 
is as Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Because he had faith. But he, and he proved his faith by his works. What was his works? Let's read it. Give me the book of Jude, man. Give me Jude. Yeah, give me Jude. Jude verse, um, Jude verse 14. Watch this. The book of Jude, verses 14. Watch this. And Enoch also. And Enoch also. The seventh from Adam. The, the what now? The seventh from Adam. The seventh from Adam. Go ahead. Prophesied of these. He did what now? Prophesied of these. He prophesied. Our forefather Enoch prophesied during his time. He prophesied. Read. Saying, mm. behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. You see that? He was prophesying about the second coming of the Lord. Back then in Genesis, our forefather Enoch. Man. Because remember, during the time of Rome, did the Lord come with ten thousands of his saints? No. <laughs> so obviously he wasn't talking about during the time of Rome. He's talking about when the Lord returns. Read. To execute judgment upon all uh -huh. and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have which ungodly, which they have what? Which they have ungodly committed. Which they have ungodly committed. So what was Enoch doing? He was teaching the people to repent. He was warning the people of the second coming of the Lord that the Lord is bringing that fire. He's bringing judgment on earth. Read. Which they have ungodly committed. Uh -huh. And of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. You see that? So our forefather Enoch he was teaching the laws of God. And by him doing that, that was his faith. Because remember, you really think about it. It's during the time of Genesis, man. Is Genesis the fifth chapter. And Enoch, our forefather, is prophesying about the second coming. Not when the Lord is going to come. No, no, the second. Not during the time of the Assyrian Empire, during the time of Isaiah, Nahum, and Jonah. No. During the time of Genesis, before even our forefather Abraham was born, he was already prophesying about the second coming. Man, that's heavy, man. That's some heavy stuff right there, man. That's heavy stuff. You understand? And he was translated. Let's get there. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. Is it 14 or 4? Yeah. 14. No, no, 4. Wisdom of Solomon 4. Watch this. Verse 7. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4, verse 7. Watch this. But though the righteous. No, no. Wisdom of Solomon 4. Yeah, verse 7. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4, verse 7. Come on. But though the righteous be prevented with death. Though the righteous is prevented with death, meaning is delivered with death. The Lord is saving you from yourself with death. Read. Yet. Shall he be in rest? Shall yet shall he be in rest? Like our forefather Abel. He's at rest, but yet he's speaking. Read. For honorable age is not that which standeth in length of time. He's gonna he says, For honorable age is not that which standeth in length of time. Go ahead. No, that is measured by number of years. No, not your physical age. But what? But wisdom. Is the gray hair unto men. But wisdom is the gray hair unto men. Come on. And an unspotted life is old age. You see that an unspotted life is old. The unspotted life meaning a sinless life is old age. You see that? Yeah, that's unspotted. That's why it says without spot. Present yourself without spot to God in Ephesians 5. But now give me that in Proverbs 16. Let's understand this. Proverbs chapter 16. Yeah, Proverbs chapter 16. Um, read verse 31. The book of Proverbs chapter 16, verses 31. Go ahead. The hoary head. The what? The hoary head. The gray hair. The gray hair. Go ahead. Is a crown of glory. The, you see, the, the a gray hair is a crown of glory. Come on. If, 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 go ahead. If it be found in the way of righteousness. You see that? 
if it be found in the way of righteousness. So gray hair, yes, is a crown of wisdom if it be found in the way of righteousness. You keep in the commandments of the Most High. Go back. Wisdom of Solomon 4. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4. Read verse 10. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4 verse 10. Come on. He pleased God. He did what now? He pleased God. He pleased the Lord. Go ahead. And was beloved of him. And he was beloved of him. Read. How did he please the Lord? Give me that in Isaiah. No, no. Baruch. Not Baruch. Excuse me. Sarak 2. Sarak 2. Verse 16. Read. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, verse 16. Read. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto him. Read. And they that love him shall be filled with the law. You see what that that is that the thing that is well pleasing to the Lord is his commandments. When we keep God's commandments, we are pleasing to the Lord. The most High God, he says, I'm pleased with them. Okay? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4. Again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4, verses 10. Read. He pleased God mm -hmm. and was beloved of him. You see that? He says, and Israel my beloved. Mm. The sons of God. We read about the sons of God here. Enoch is a son of God. Read. So that living among sinners... He was translated. That's what happened to our forefather Enoch. He was translated. He lived among sinners. But what did he do when he was, while he was among sinners? He taught them the commandments like we read in the book of Jude. Read. Yea, speedily was he taken away. Speedily, Enoch was, he, he was taken away. He never saw death. Read. Lest that wickedness should alter his understanding. You see that? Lest that wickedness should alter his understanding. Or deceit beguile his soul. Or deceit beguile his soul. Because guess what? You are going to be beguiled if, you hear, if we are here long enough. That's why the Lord is, is making the time short. Yeah. The Lord is making the time short because if we are beyond the time that was allocated, we're not going to make it. So the Lord has to make the time short for us to get delivered, man. That's it. So he has to make the time short. This is some heavy stuff, man. Verse 13. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 13. Watch this. He being made perfect in a short time. You see that? He being made perfect in a short time. This also goes into Christ also. Read. Fulfilled a long time. He fulfilled a long time. Go ahead, watch this. For his soul pleased the Lord. His soul pleased the Lord. Therefore, hasted he to take him away from among the wicked. You see that? The Lord was quick to take him in Acts 1 and 9. Heavy stuff. Okay, some heavy stuff, man. Go back to Hebrews. Hebrews 11. Hebrews chapter 11, uh, read verse 5 again. Yes, sir. The book of Hebrews chapter 11, verses 5. Read. Right. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. That he should not see death. Read. Right. And was not found. Mm. He was not found because he was translated. Go ahead. Because God had translated him. Mm. Imagine. you born. You do the work. The Lord just takes you. You know what? You know, like, you know, because you might ask yourself, what, in today, how could that happen? You know how people go missing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you go missing. <laughs> the prophet of the Most High, you doing the work. You doing great and mighty works. And then he said, brothers, eh, I'm going somewhere, I'll be back. Nobody, no, wherever you're going, nobody has seen you. God, the Lord translated you, just disappeared. And now you are part of the missing persons. God, did know. <laughs> You've been translated, man. <laughs> so you may ask, in this life, can that happen? Yes. Okay. Of course, it can happen. Go ahead. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 5. Read. But 
by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death Ray. and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation. He, say, he says because before his translation, what happened? He had his testimony. He had this testimony. Okay, meaning Enoch had this testimony before he was translated. What was the testimony? Hold this. Revelation 19. Okay. What was the testimony? Before that, give me that in um, Isaiah chapter 8. Before we go to Revelation. Isaiah 8. Let's go there first. Okay. Let's read that thing then. Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah 8 verse 20. Let's read that. The book of Isaiah chapter 8 verses 20. Come on. To the law. To the what? To the law. To the law. And to the testimony. And to the testimony. Go ahead. If they speak not according to this word. If they speak not according to this word, meaning the word of God. Come on. It is because there is no light in them. It is because there is no light in them. No understanding in them. Now give me Revelation 19. He says, before Enoch was translated, he had this testimony. Okay. Revelation 19 verse 10. The book of Revelation chapter 19 verse 10. Go ahead. And I fell at his feet to worship him. Mm. And he said, mm. and he said unto me, see thou do it not. Meaning don't do that. See thou do it not. Come on. I am thy fellow servant. I am thy fellow servant. Read. And of thy brethren. And of thy what? And of thy brethren Ray. that have the testimony of Jesus. You see what? You see, Enoch had the testimony of Christ. Mm. That's why he prophesied about him coming with ten thousands of his saints. Okay, come on. And have the testimony of Jesus. Mm. Worship God mm. for the testimony of Jesus. Because the testimony of Jesus, which our forefather Enoch had, is the spirit of prophecy. What did he prophesy, man? Mm. That the Lord will come with ten thousands of his saints. Mm. That's what he prophesied. So go back to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 now, verse 6. Watch this. I'm going to end it here. Come on. The book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Go ahead. But without faith. But without what? But without faith. Without action. Because faith is action. Faith is an action word. That's what you need to understand. Faith is a weightier matter of the law. Not only that, but it's an action word. Read. But without faith, it is impossible it to is what? It is impossible. It is what? It is impossible. It is impossible, the Lord is telling you. It is without faith. It's impossible to do what? To please him. You see that? And faith is not a feeling. Faith is an action word. So if you want to please the Lord, you must be lead with action. Read. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Read. For he that cometh to God, he, for he that cometh to the Lord, must believe that he is that he must believe that he is the god of all the god of the 12 tribes of israel and none else he must believe that god is a black man with woolly hair he must believe that his son is a black man with woolly hair and red eyes yeah it's because of why he must believe that his skin is so dark as if he burned in a furnace he must believe that read and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You see that? He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So the Lord is telling you it is impossible to please him without faith. So faith is an action word. Faith is not a feeling on the inside. Mm -mm. Faith is an action word. Understand that thing, man. Okay, let me see what I can bring up. Mm, do I want to go there? Mm. Brothers, anything you want to bring up? Come on, man. You can bring something up. Oh, please. Uh, shalom, Israel. Um, as we have learned, uh, by faith, there's a part that I saw as the leadership was just bringing out, which I found interesting. Um, Hebrews 11. It was in verse where it said, uh, yes, verse 4. Please read that. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 4. Read. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. A more what? A more excellent sacrifice than Cain. A more excellent sacrifice. When I saw this, um, 
leadership was going over it saying that the fruit and veggies are not unlawful. They are not unclean. But this is a more excellent sacrifice that Abel offered. Because what? The Most High wants, wants blood. He wanted blood in the Old Covenant and in the New Testament when Christ offered himself. Read it again. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4. Read. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Oh, by, read. by which he obtained witness that by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God, the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4. Come on. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. Oh, praise. So that's the more excellent sacrifice that we are reading about. The weightier matter of the law, not the mint and cumin. Jump down to verse 7. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 7. Read. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet. Of things that? Of things not seen as yet. As it came out. We have not seen the Lord with our eye, but we believe it. Because that's faith. And we prove that faith by the works. Hence now, SOC out here, teaching the word of God, making sure the people believe and understand what is written. We have not seen these things. So our forefather Noah, he moved in the same spirit. He didn't see the rain before. He didn't know what was coming in terms of the physical part. But he believed that there would be the rain coming because the Lord said so. Read. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. All oh, praises to the Most High. Those are the two points for now, sir. All oh, praises. Thank you. All oh, praises to the Most High. All oh, praises. Genesis 22 also. Yes. Do you have something you want to bring up? Hey, shalom, Israel. All oh, praises. Uh, just as the, the elder brought it out and so Jeremiah brought it out to say that our forefathers had great faith because as we read in the scriptures, uh, the same book of Hebrews, uh, we read about the faith of our forefather because our forefather Noah, he had not seen the flood, but then he showed his action as, 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 it, as, as it came out in class that faith is an action word. How did he show his action? He preached that to the people and also he did what? He built the ark according to the way the Most High com uh, commanded him. That was his action to show what? To show the faith that he has in the Most High God. So let's read uh, Hebrews. Go back to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11, verse, uh, read verse 14. The book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 14. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Read on. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. Oh, praise. So, read verse 14 again. Read that again. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 14. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Read. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. So that, that country is what? Is the promised land. That country is Jerusalem. So jump up to verse, uh, jump down to verse 17. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. When he was what? When he was tried. When he was tried, when his faith was tried. What did he do? Offered up Isaac. He offered up Isaac. What did he do? He showed his faith by his action. He didn't just say that I believe in the Most High. I have faith. Just like our brothers and sisters in the Christian church, they say. They say, no, you need to have a personal relationship with Christ. And when you ask, what's that personal relationship? They say, no, just believe. So, but we are going over the scriptures here and they are showing us that faith is an action word. Read on. By faith, when he... By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. You see, he offered up his only begotten son. So the Most High God asked Abraham to say that, do this thing to show your faith. And he didn't hesitate. He wasn't double-minded. 
he knew that his faith can only be shown by his word, by his actions, like we read in the book of James. So we need to have faith, and the faith we must have must be shown by our actions. What are those actions? Applying the commandments of the Most High God, going out to the streets to preach. Unlike those Israelites that will say that, no, we just, we just chill and go over scriptures, but they don't want, they're not doing the works to show their faith in Christ. We don't. Of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. You see, so our forefather had faith. He knew that if the most, if he sacrificed his son Isaac, the most high God will bring him back. Because of what? Because of the promises that the most high God has promised unto him. Read. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. You see, that's the faith that our forefather had. He knew that the most high God made this promise to me. That he will what? He will make me a great nation. And therefore, when the Most High God asked him to sacrifice, he wasn't hesitant. Because what? He had faith and he showed it by his action. Read. From whence also he received him in a figure. You see? So our forefathers had great faith. The only son he had, but he was willing to go and sacrifice him. Because what? Because the Lord said so. So we need to show the, our faith by what? By our actions. All praise. All oh, praise to the Most High. All oh, praise. Some good stuff right there, man. Some good stuff. You want to bring something up? Thank you, sir. All oh, praise. Let's get Genesis 22. We we'll start at verse 1. Because this just came out now. So Jebezalel was just letting us know the faith of our father, Abraham. Read. The book of Genesis, chapter 22, verse 1. Read. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. Come on. And said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. Read. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac. What did the Lord say? Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac. His only son, Isaac. The Most High is letting you know that right here, who is the son of Abraham, according to the promise? Thine only son Isaac, read. Thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into a land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. This is what we were reading. So that's what Soja Bezal was going over. So this is the proof of it, that in Genesis 22, this is the action that our forefather Abraham took. Why? Because he believed the Lord. He had faith in the Lord. And not only did he just say, I believe in my heart. No action. But he took the action to offer him up until the Lord said, no, no, no. Don't do that anymore. But the point is that he did it. He was willing to do it all the way through. Not double-minded, not thinking twice about it. Read it again. The book of Genesis, chapter 22, verses 2. Read. And he said, take now thy son. Thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. Whom thou lovest. You see that? The only son that you love. Earlier in the class, it came out that, you know, we believe in the craft of our hands. Meaning what? It can be anything. It can be an object. It can be yourself. It can also be your son. You see what the Lord is letting us know? That even the son that you love the most, the question will be, will you do what your son or what the Lord is saying, or you will just be in your fields about it? and not perform what the Lord is commanding. Read. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. Read. And get thee into a land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Oh, please. Yes, sir. Uh, I wanted to just to bring that out to show that this is the action that our father took as it is written. Oh, please. Oh, praise to the most high, man. That's some good stuff. You want to bring something up? Oh, praise. Oh, praise. Uh, to to complement what the soldier just brought up, soldier Nehemiah, let's read the book of Samuel. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 3. Read verse 3. First book of Samuel, chapter 2, verse 3. Talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogance come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. By him what? And by him actions are weighed. By him 
actions are weighed, are, are weighed. So the most high God is letting you know, talk no exceedingly proudly. Meaning what? Talk is cheap. That's what they say here in the world to say that talk is cheap, but actions, the actions they count. So the most high God is not a God of what? Of talk. You can't just say that, no, I have faith. I believe. I have Jesus in my heart. Jesus is in my heart. You can't just say that. You have to what? You have to show that Jesus is in your heart. You have to show that you have faith in the most high God. Because by the most high God, actions are weighed. The most high God is a God of knowledge. The knowledge is what? His commandments. Read that. Give me that in Malachi. Read that. Malachi 2 verse 7. The book of Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. And they should seek the law at his mouth. They should seek what? And they should seek the law at his mouth. So the priest's lips should keep knowledge. What is the knowledge? The knowledge is the laws of God. Now go back. Go back to the book of Samuel. First book of Samuel, chapter 2, verse 3. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is the God of knowledge. And by him actions are weighed. By the most high God, the actions are weighed. And, and in this same chapter, if you read up, you'll, you'll see the fate of our foremother also. The mother of, our, of the, prophet, the great prophet Samuel. Because she also showed her faith by her actions. But we're not talking about that right now. All praise. Yes, sir. Uh, read that uh, in uh, the same book, the book of Samuel. Read verse, uh, study the verse. Yes, sir. Study the verse 8. First book of Samuel, chapter 2, verses 8. Chapter 1, chapter 1. Verse Excuse eight. me. First book of Samuel, chapter 1, verses 8. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? You see, so our foremother here, she was mourning. Because what? She could not bear a son. You understand? Read on. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Elah, the priest, sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. Read. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept so. You see, so our foremothers, when they were in trouble, they prayed unto the Lord. They never ran after politics. Or and after Christianity, they prayed unto the Lord. Read. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but wilt give unto thine handmaid and man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. You see, so our foremother here was praying. She was asking of the Lord to say that, Lord, do this thing for me. Give me a son. Because she had faith in the Lord. And she told the Lord to say that, to prove my faith, this is what I will do. I will dedicate the son unto you. I will give the son unto you. If the Most High God does this, I will do this for the Lord. That's the word, the actions she showed of the faith she had in the Lord. Read verse 29. First book of Samuel chapter 1 verses 20. Wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel saying because I have asked him of the Lord. You see she even named the son Sa Sa what? Uh, Samuel to say what I had asked him of the Lord. She was giving honor and she was giving praise to the most high God. Read Read verse, uh, jump, jump, jump down to 27. First book of Samuel chapter 1 verses 27. For this child I pray, and the Lord has given me my petition, which I asked of him. You see, the Lord had given her the petition which she asked of the Lord. Read. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord 
and you worshiped the Lord there. You see, so he gave this son unto the Lord. That was the show of her faith. Unlike today, you ask something of the Lord. You ask, uh, let's say, for a job from the Most High God. And then you get that job. Afterwards, instead of you coming back to your, to what? Coming back in Israel and seeing the gaps and say, okay, the Most High God gave me this job. So this little income I have must benefit the people, must benefit the nation. That's how you're giving back. You're giving back to the Most High God. But we don't think like that. You get from the Lord and then you become selfish. You say, no, I did this. I worked for this. But our foremother didn't move in that spirit. She acknowledged the Most High God because she had asked from the Most High God and the Most High God gave her and then she showed her faith by giving back. All oh, praise. All praise. Right oh, praises to the oh, Most High God. Woo! Some beautiful stuff, man, coming out. So, brothers and sisters, hope you've learned. Okay? All praises to the Lord. One more, one more. Let me get a script, man. Brothers, you know, you are lighting me up. Mm. All praises to the Lord. Watch this. Um, give me, go back to Hebrews. You know what? No. Give me Second Timothy. Yeah, that's what I want. Give me Second Timothy. Um, Second Timothy 3. Give me Second Timothy chapter 3. Um, read verse 9. Second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 9. Read. But they shall proceed no further. No, no, verse 10. I'm sorry, verse 10. Second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 10. Now, this is the apostle Paul writing to Timothy. Watch this. Read. But thou hast fully known my doctrine. This is, but thou hast fully known my doctrine. What is that doctrine? God's commandments. Go ahead. But thou hast fully known my doctrine. Manner of life. Manner of life, meaning the way I live, the way I carry myself in this truth. Go ahead. Purpose. Purpose. Faith. Mm. What? Faith. What now? Faith. Faith. The Apostle Paul had great faith. So he's teaching Timothy to have the same thing. That's why it says, the same commit thou to faithful men who should be able to teach others also. Read. Long suffering. Long suffering, meaning endurance. What we were going over earlier on, if you're paying attention to the class. Go ahead. Charity. Charity. Read. Patience. 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 Come on. Persecutions. Persecutions because you're going to go through trials in the truth. You're going to be persecuted for righteousness sake. Go ahead. Afflictions. Afflictions. Right now we are afflicted as a people. Okay, read. Which came unto me at Antioch. Read. Because the apostle Paul was traveling. Why? Because he believed the gospel. He wanted to reach the soul. To teach the gospel unto them. To edify them. To repent. To return back unto the Lord God of Israel. Read. At Iconium. At Iconium. At Lystra. Uh -huh. What persecutions I endured. What persecutions I ran away from. What persecutions I endured. What persecutions I walked away from. What persecutions I endured. When I gave up. I endured. When I make excuses. I endured. When I blame others for not being able to push in this truth. I endured. Hating your brother in your heart because why? You don't want to get up and fight. I endured. I endured. So in this truth, you need endurance. Okay? And you must have faith. Again, faith also requires endurance. Faith also, it requires you to have endurance. Okay, go ahead. But out of them, all the Lord delivered of, me. Uh, he says, out of them all, the Lord delivered me. So the Lord delivered the Apostle Paul from all these. Why? Because he had faith. You understand? He had faith. So the same thing that the Apostle Paul was teaching Timothy, he's teaching to us today and we're teaching it to you. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1. Watch this. First Corinthians 11 and 1. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 1. Go ahead. Be ye followers of me, mm. even... As I also am of Christ. You see that? He says, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So the same way the Apostle Paul followed Christ by keeping his command by having faith, by having the spirit of endurance, by having the spirit of discipline and commitment to the gospel, guess what? He said we must have the same thing in these last days. You understand? So he says, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Because Christ left an example for us. Okay, give me that in John 15 verse 12. John 15 and verse 12. We're almost done. John 15 and 
John 15 and verse 12. Read there. The book of John chapter 15 verses 12. Come on. This is my commandment. Mm. That ye love one another. That we love one another. Come on. As I have loved you. Christ is going to show us how he loved us. Read. Greater love hath no man than this. Greater love hath no man than this. Go ahead. That a man laid down his life for his friends. Because why? He had faith. Greater love hath no man than this. That a man laid down his life for his friends. Because he had faith. And his faith was proved by his works. What was his works? John 19 verse 30. The book of John, chapter 19, verses 30. Watch this. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar. When he received the vinegar, this one was on the cross. Go ahead. He said, mm. it is finished. It is what? It is finished. It is finished. What was finished? Him laying his life down for the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Go ahead. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. You see that? What was finished? Him laying his life down for the 12 tribes of because he had great faith. And his faith was proved by his action. What was his action? Him finishing the work that the Lord sent him here on the earth to do. So with that, we're going to end the class right here. All praises to the Lord. All praises to the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand. <laughs> Woo! All praises to the Most High. Let's break bread. Let's break bread. Okay, you put up the banner, right? For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as he eat this bread and drink this cup, he do show the Lord's death to the cup. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, and the same to his body. For his cause, many are weak and sickly among them. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. We pray. Amen.